Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you my special technique for drawing anime girls. I like to start um, with the bumps. A lot of people like to just add a couple bumps onto the front of their anime girl. I am kind of a perfectionist, so I say two bumps isn't quite enough. Let's go with a whole shitload of bumps. So. I just kind of cram as many together as I can into, you know, kind of that front top area there. And, you know, that's just like my jumping off point. That's how, that's how I like to get started. And then here you can see I'm adding on the tubes. Now, when you add tubes onto your anime girl, a lot, the tendency for a lot of people is to just have them kind of sticking out of the bottom and the sides, you know, maybe like four of them or something. But I like to have them come out and then kind of, you know, loop back around, maybe plug back in um, to the anime girl. Because, you know, it is a cartoon. A lot of people get really hung up on, you know, proportions, how many heads tall is it, you know, how to do the eyes, the right proportion and the spacing in between them and all that stuff. And you know, it's, it's a cartoon. You can use your imagination a little bit here. So that's why I like to have the tubes kind of, you know, maybe they'll come out and then jog off to like in a weird direction and then plug back into the anime girl. Anyways. Um, so here I'm kind of coming through and I'm just giving the bumps uh, a little bit of a contour, a little bit of shape here with some cross hatching. And same thing with the tubes there. You want the, uh, the tubes and the bumps to look tuby and bumpy, obviously. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't add enough cross hatching to their anime girls. And so here's the eye. I like to do one eye on my anime girl. A lot of people go for two eyes. And I'm just saying, I know I'm saying a lot of people do that, do it this way. I do it that way. But like I said, there's, it's, it is a cartoon. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, wiggle room with what you can do. Next, I'm adding uh, another one of those tubes, just kind of coming out of the side there. And now I'm hatching in some more of the bumps and, uh, you know, just adding some contour lining in here, there, there's another tube. You know, I, tr I decided instead of having them come one come out of each side, I'm going to have them kind of come out of the same side just to, you know, mix it up a little bit, right? We don't want our animated girl to look exactly the same as everybody else's. We, we want to have an original, um, you know, interesting piece, you know? We don't want to just copy everything we've seen already, right? Like, that would be, what's the point of doing that if we're not, you know, putting our own spin on it, right? And so, yeah, and then here... A lot of people don't add those like serrated ridges on the top of theirs, uh, but you know, I think it really, you know, ties it all together. So I like to add the serrated ridges and then here I'm just, I'm kind of all over the place. So, you know, hopefully you uh, learn by watching here, but um, you know, I'm adding some more of the contour, the, the shading, the shaping on the big bumps. And then, you know, I put this a couple little circles on there, obviously. Um, cause you need to, you know, kind of spice it up a little bit. And if you don't have those little circles on there, people aren't going to know what the bumps are. Right. And then, yeah, serrating the outside edge here. Um, it's kind of how I put my own little spin on it. And then now you want her to have some nice flowing hair. So I'm kind of getting like a base for the hair going here. You see that big swoopy curl coming down. And that's going to be like kind of the jumping off point for the hair. And then here I'm just adding a couple more bumps because I, I, you know, I wasn't feeling like it had enough bumps. Um, so you just want to make sure that you really develop the bumps. Make sure they're very bumpy and, you know, give them a lot of texture. And yeah, here I'm adding some more, um, you know, flowy hair bits coming out of the, you know, the side here, a lot of people come off the top, but I, I was thinking kind of out of the side and the bottom a little bit just to, you know, like I said, mix it up, make it original. So here I am uh, cross hatching this tube a little bit just to, you know, give it a little bit of definition, a little bit of shape, and then 
adding the uh, protuberances. Protuberances? Protuberances? I, I can't remember what they're called. But anyways, you want to have those kind of just jutting out the bottom of the eye there like that. And then that one, I kind of just blunted off at the end. I don't know what I was thinking, but I kind of like it, you know? Like, oh, and then I decided it could be a little bit more, you know, pointed. And then, yeah, we're going to come in and add a little shape and depth to the eye. Just starting around the eye. I'm Like I said, I'm all over the place in this drawing. I'm sorry. I meant to, uh, you know, make it a little bit more easy to follow along with, you know, in case you wanted to. But yeah. Anyways, here we're shading in the protuberances um, and, you know, adding a little bit of contour lining to those just to, you know, add a little bit of visual interest like you do, right? And then, yeah, now I'm going to start working on the detail in the hair a little bit here. You'll see I kind of connected it to one of the protuberances there. And I'm, okay, well, apparently I'm going to shade in the eye. But any minute now, there we go. Now I'm working on the hair. Yes. So you want to just make sure you get a little bit of flow. Well, okay, maybe I'm not working on the hair. It looks like I'm uh, working on the forehead now. Um, forehead's not that interesting, right? Like, you know how to draw for it. You draw on one forehead, you know how to draw them all. But um, what I will say about that is the kind of bite marks I added in there. That was like, you know, my own little spin on everything. So, okay, yes. So here, the hair, finally. Yeah, so we want to make it flowing. We want to make it, you know, luxurious and all that. So I'm just using some nice swoopy lines here, you know, having it loop around itself a little bit and kind of hang loosely, you know, maybe, you know, grab a picture of some hair off the internet and, you know, just see what it looks like. Mine was kind of like in a drain for my reference photo. So I think maybe you might want to look at like hair on a person or something instead, but you know, whatever, you know, it, it doesn't really matter how you get there as long as you get there. That's kind of my whole point. Anyways. Okay. And then every good anime girl is going to have some nodules detaching from her head. So I'm adding those in. I'm adding a little bit of hair coming off of them. And this is just, I mean, I don't want to be like cliche or whatever, but that's like, you know, if you're drawing an anime girl, she needs the head nodules. So you might as well just do it. And then, yeah, here we're going to add a background, you know, kind of start to finish it up. The uh, I'm kind of doing like a, a comic book panel, man, ma manga, man, manga, manga, I don't know how to say it, panel for the background. So I'm just going to line that in and, you know, I spaced it about an inch away from the edge of the page there. And, yeah, I'm lining it in so then we can start to add some background behind her. And it's really going to just kind of add a little bit of depth, tie everything together. And I've got my fine, extra fine fountain pen out here. Now I'm going to go through and, you know, hatch everything. I decided I kind of wanted it to look like, you know, she's in a, uh, maybe like a dark basement or a dungeon or something, you know, like, you know, that classic like anime girl trope. So, um, so I'm coming through, I'm just go doing a, a, an entire layer of hatching one way and you'll see here I'm just I just go through every little bit of background because we want to get that nice dark um, dark tone dark contrast so she really looks like she's in a dungeon you know like if you're not getting like that contrast it's just gonna it's just gonna look all muddy and that's not what you want right and you'll see here it starts to look muddy um, but you know we're going to come through, we're going to do a second layer, we're going to do some cross hatching, um, and that's really going to make it pop out. And you just want to make sure you get, like, you know, in between the tubes there, you know. A lot of people will skip that part. They don't, they don't add shading in between the tubes of their anime girl. They just kind of, like, I don't know, it's just, like, quick and dirty. You know, maybe they color it in or something. I don't know. That's not my style. So we're coming through with the hatching. And apparently I'm going to wiggle my fingers around a bunch for a while. Uh, um, maybe I was uh, tapping out a beat. I was listening to music while I was doing this. So um, 
that could be what's going on. Sometimes you got to listen to, uh, you know, I like to listen to Primus while I'm drawing my anime girls. So I think that's pretty common, but you know, who knows, you know, let me know in the comments. What do you listen to? Um, but yeah, anyways, coming through with my single pass hatching still, still doing it. Any day will be done. Maybe I should have cut some of this out, but that's okay. You know, stick with me here. We'll get there. Yeah, and up by the uh, nodules, obviously, you want to have some... It, and see how I have them coming out of the pane there, the panel, right? That just adds, like, a little bit of 3D effect, and it really puts her in the scene, you know? Because you don't want her to look like she's just kind of floating in space, right? You want her to look like she's placed in the scene. And then, yeah, here, we're coming through with our second layer. So when I come through with the second layer, I'm adding... You know, some of those dark shadows that you would have behind you when you were in a basement or a dungeon. And, you know, but I'm not bringing the shadows all the way out. I'm kind of leaving, like, some of the, the areas as single pass hatching here. Um, almost like a reverse vignette, I suppose. And, um, and what that's going to do is that's just going to kind of give it a little bit more shape a little bit more dimension and we don't have to do too much detail in the dungeon in the background and all that stuff it's kind of more implied here so you know it's just it's just a little bit of cross hatching to kind of push that back and you know i mean obviously you can see you have eyes you can, you're watching the video so um you can see that's just gonna kind of push the background back a little bit Give us a little more contrast where we need it and just, you know, make her bumps um, that much more, you know, separated from the background. Make some stand out, make some bumpier looking and um, all that sort of stuff, right? So background's very important. I recommend you don't skip it or skip this part of the video. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm coming through with the uh, outline and just kind of, I've you know, it got a little muddy through here, so a little too dark. I, and we're not having the amount of contrast like the, on those protuberances and her hair. So I'm just coming through and I'm just kind of uh, filling that in, filling the hair in, and then, you know, bulking up some of the outlines, you know. And, and that's completely okay because it's a cartoon, right? Like, so you can have like a big, thick, cartoony outline. Um, and that's perfectly acceptable and it, uh, uh, honestly it gives it quite a bit of pop um, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with bulking up that outline and then yeah we're going to come up here on the tube sticking out of her side and you know just right across the top here just really give it some pop oh yeah and her nodules yeah we want to make sure we get those nodules like you know really popping out Anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful. Go ahead and leave me a like, a comment, and a subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I would like to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon real quick. You guys make it possible for me to buy extra art supplies every month. There's a link in the description below. And I will see you all in the next video. All right, bye.